Hi everyone, um, welcome to Lala Rush Art. Today I thought I would do something a little bit different than I normally do and talk you through one of my paintings. Um, I had found this set, which I'm going to show you. I found it while I was shopping at Jerry's Artorama and I thought it looked kind of interesting. 12 Shades of Grey kind of made me laugh. And it has a lot of really cool gray tones, blue, gray, brown, gray, green, gray, yellow, gray. So I thought it could be interesting to do a pour. I have a 20 by 20 canvas here that is just using all of these really cool gray tones. So let me show you the colors. I have picked um, the red gray. It's just, I, I just think it's beautiful. It has a terracotta look to it. And here, I'll just set them down so you can see them. I have the brown gray. Almost looks a little bit like a pink woman's foundation. Um, there's the green gray. Just love that. Here's violet gray. Here we go. Payne's Gray, which was already one of my favorite colors anyway. I use it all the time in my pores. And then this one is called Cold Gray. So these are, there was 12 colors in the box. I picked six. I thought this was a fun combination. And then uh, to balance out all of these colors, which are a very similar value, I'm also going to use this iridescent white that I got from Liquitex. It's like, uh, here it is. It comes like this in a tube. So my plan is to layer a cup with all of these colors. I really hope that this Payne's Gray is dark enough to contrast these, because you can see these are all very similar values, but this would be my dark and this would be my light, and then these are my interest colors. So let's go ahead and pour the cup. So the first color in is gonna be whatever is in the center. I'm doing a straight pour today, so it'll be what is left in the center. So I would like some of this iridescent white to be right in the center. And let me just kind of Go down the line here, put some of this cold gray. While I'm pouring, uh, I'll tell you that I usually use Floetrol. I'm a big Floetrol lover. I usually do a one part uh, paint to two parts Floetrol, maybe a splash of water in my pores, but this time, because I had seen that some other fluid artists were having difficulty getting Floetrol. And I know some people were really worried about this. I thought, well, I'm gonna bite, bite the bullet and spend a little bit extra money buying a professional pouring medium. So I went ahead and spent the money to buy some of the golden pouring medium, gloss pouring medium. As soon as I'm done filling this cup, I'll show you what that looks like. Golden has always been an excellent company. Their colors are fabulous. Their quality is so, is so well known. I, I'm sure I'm gonna have a fabulous pour, but it is pricey, several times more per gallon than what you would expect with Floetrol. But I'm excited because for me, this is going to be a little bit like Christmas to see what kind of a result I get. I'm hoping that this is going to be just one of my favorite all time paintings. We will see. I love this palette with the grays. It's not something I had really thought to do before. And um, gray in general has just been popular color and design and clothes. I'm spilling a little on my canvas. You'll have to just excuse my butterfingers there. 
we'll just say it's going to add to the composition. <laughs> so let me just put a little bit more. I want to use every drop of this. This pouring medium is too valuable to let any of this go to waste. What I really hope is that I'm going to fall so in love with this painting that I'm just going to want to go back and buy more. I got a pretty good price. Uh, I believe I paid, I think I, well, probably I'll look it up and put it in the video because I'm going to misquote. But I, I got a good price. Jerry's Artorama was having a sale. When you really get into fluid pouring, you are always looking for the sales. And so I keep my eyes open for Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Blick, Jerry's Artorama, sometimes Amazon. Although for store paints like Artist's Loft, um, you're not going to find a better price than at the store. So I try to go to the source. Here we go. I have not picked a definite pattern for my layers here. What I was just trying to do is to keep the layers kind of sedate um, if they're not real mixed up so that the colors don't premix too much. I really want to see these different colors on the canvas. So this is a nice full cup. I hope I have put enough. Pretty sure I have. This last color will be the first color that goes on the canvas. Sometimes I get them confused, but the first color that goes on the canvas, even if you pour it in the center, is going to be the color that's towards the edge or even the color that you sacrifice over the edge. So it's a good thing to remember, like this little bit of green will probably get lost when I stretch the paint, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm all full here. I did make a little mess, sorry. But I'm gonna prep the canvas with a little bit of white just to get it wet. I'm not gonna do the whole canvas, just the center, a little bit of um, sacrificial paint, so to speak, get the canvas wet so that when I pour the, the gray tones, they don't all stick, they, they kind of glide. So let me just smooth this around. This base coat is uh, Artist's Loft Flow White. It comes here, it comes like this. Oops. It comes like this. This is actually mixed with Floetrol. So I didn't use the golden um, medium for that. And actually, here is what this looks like. Golden, golden color pouring medium gloss. And from what I understand with Floetrol, you get kind of a matte look, which, which is nice on its own. But with this, it should be nice and glossy. So I haven't done a great job of frosting this cake. <laughs> I was kind of trying to avoid this, the colors that I, I did there, but here we go. Just a nice base layer for everything to flow on. Here we go. All right. So let's get our cup pouring. I'll give you a quick look here. What we've got, all those layers. Looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna pour straight in the center and let's do it. All right, here it goes. Let's see. This is definitely 
a palette I have personally never played with. So I, I love it when I'm doing something a little bit different for myself. I'm gonna do a little shake shake. Let's do a little shake, shake, shake and see what kind of structures we get. Kind of a little angel wing structure in the center. And I'm just gonna let that white pour out. There we go. Ooh, I'm going over the edge already. Here we go. I forgot to level my canvas. Look at me forgetting to level the canvas. Okay, so um, I'm gonna torch, but I just wanted some of this, the bulk of this paint to go backward and not all over the edge. So let me get my torch going. This is just an inexpensive Amazon torch. And the reason I picked this one over others uh, was just because the torch part fits onto a normal butane can of fuel. So I could just get the fuel anywhere. I don't have to buy it specific size for a specific sort of torch. And um, it just hooks right onto the, the can. It's not fancy. Um, there's much nicer looking torches, but this has been working for me just fine to pop the bubbles. Okay, so let's see how this goes. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest. Uh, maybe it's because I know that in dollars there's more value of product on this canvas than some of the ones that i just use for playing for testing all right let's see i'm, I'm just spreading it around first i'm watching where the weight of my paint is always where the weight of the paint is and inching it towards the edges. You know what, for this one, I think I'm gonna get dirty. I'm gonna put my hand, well, put, put my hand to kind of block a little bit of the paint, or maybe not, it's already going over the edge. Okay, forget, forget what I said. <laughs> Let's just go, Geronimo, over the edge. All right, bringing it back. You know, when you watch these videos, it, it seems like, like, why did she do that? Or, you know, what, oh, you got rid of my favorite part. But in the moment, it can be really tough to decide what paint to sacrifice. And it's always moving. So even your favorite parts that you might want to try to preserve, um, they go. They even go just sometimes during the drying. Okay, I'm bringing it back towards me. It's kind of weird. The purple has just taken over. Um, I'm, I, I am a purple fan, but just a little surprised. Here, let's, let's check this out. Just gonna pull some of this over. This, look at that. Remember I was saying that the, the last colors are the ones that go over the edges? Well. I'm not seeing very much of the terracotta, which I poured at the end. I did have some in the middle, but yeah, the purple really took over. Some colors are denser and they're gonna sink. I've heard that uh, colors mixed with yellow have a tendency because yellow is heavy, white is heavy and will tend to sink. And maybe my earth tones were heavier than the purple. Never used this paint before, so this is a experiment. Now I'm just touching up the corners and I haven't really looked at the composition yet to see if there's anything I want to do. I'm just using some of the drips to get the little bald spots. I love these deep gallery canvases because part of the whole beauty of a paint pour is what went over the edge. So 
I'm gonna get myself cleaned up and then let's look at what we've got. So this is the wet result after about 15 minutes of settling. I'm switching to voiceover because a thunderstorm had started and I couldn't use the original audio. So I'll walk you through what was going on. When I saw the painting, I just felt like there wasn't enough interest and there was too much violet. I had really liked the range of colors in the 12 shades of gray pack. I wanted to see more of the terracotta colors especially. So I made a cup with red gray, brown gray, and Payne's gray and decided to do a small ring pour. Now, I didn't necessarily want to just have a circle in the middle of my painting, but I knew that I just needed to introduce some more color, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to get real wild with it or just stretch out the circle, maybe put it over an edge, and bring something new to the painting. With me using the golden color acrylic pouring medium for the first time, I wasn't familiar with how it affected the colors, how the colors would blend, but also how the medium would react as I added more paint to the canvas. I wasn't sure if it would get too thick, if it would crack. And what I did notice is that this medium is much more tacky than using Floetrol. Floetrol is more of a creamy consistency where this one, it's much more sticky. And I think that's what lends to the shininess of it. And, and it's actually a really great product, but it was new for me to see how it moved on the canvas. And when I torched it, I noticed that there were a lot more micro bubbles appearing than when I use Floetrol. Sometimes I don't even torch at all with Floetrol, but every single time I turned the, tor the torch onto this canvas, a whole bunch of little bubbles would pop up. And so I was a little worried how that would affect the final product since I was inexperienced with using it. But stretching the ring pour over the corner did bring something new and interesting to the painting. I just wasn't sure if it was enough. So I let it sit for a little bit so that I could look at it and see how it had developed. And I just knew I needed to add more paint. So I made a cup of green gray, Payne's gray, and white and decided to do a little traveling pour, a little bit of a wing pour across another corner. And what I noticed was that the white and the Payne's gray being the light and the dark, brought a lot more contrast. I knew from the beginning, I told you at the beginning of this video, that all of the colors had similar values. That's part of why they blended together so much. When you really looked closely, you could see that there was green, there was gray, there was purple, there was terracotta. But from the back, when you stood, stood back, you just saw the violet. So I made the decision that I would just keep adding more paint especially white and Payne's gray to give more of that contrast, break it up a little. So I went ahead and made a cup with primarily white, Payne's gray, and the cold gray. And my original thought was to make another ring pour. And then as I was doing the ring pour, I didn't know, was that just going to be boring to have the terracotta looking ring pour right next to another ring pour. And so I thought, well, maybe I should just kind of shake the cup around and make some wild black lines and see how those stretch out. Because of course, all these little tiny movements look much, much different when the paint stretches out. So stretching it out though, the second time, was not quite as easy because I did not realize that this pouring medium dries faster than using Floetrol. And it's most evident in the drips that went over the sides the second time 
because when it dried, you could actually see that there was like a second layer of drips. It didn't just meld into the original um, pouring that was on there. And you could really see the weight of the paint moving around like as though it were heavier. And I wasn't sure if I was just ruining everything <laughs> by moving it around more. And then I had my family who are my biggest fans, my biggest cheerleaders, standing there telling me what their favorite parts and what their not so favorite parts were. And you make a lot of decisions in the moment. It, you don't get a chance to really step back and say, oh, this is really pretty. Don't, don't let that go over the edge. Um, and so I just started moving the paint around and I thought, well, this doesn't have to be a masterpiece. This is more about learning the flute, this, the, this particular medium and testing out this particular set of paints. So I decided to add more paint. I made a cup with the violet, the white, and Payne's gray. Now you're probably wondering why am I adding violet when originally there was too much violet. But as you can see, very little of the original violet was showing through. It all went over the edge or it got buried under other colors. And I thought that was a shame because I did quite like the violet color. And the original terracotta ring pour just didn't seem like it matched the emotion of the other two additions with all of that dark Payne's gray and all of those aggressive lines. So I thought I needed to be a little bit more freeform and throw in some squiggly little chaos in there to kind of bring it together so that it all seemed like it was part of the same painting. So I stretched the paint yet again and I lost the entire terracotta ring pour, which seemed counterproductive, especially how expensive the pouring medium is. But I was in it deep and I just had to keep moving forward and just keep reassessing. One of my suggestions, if you're in a similar position, is to stop and take a photo of your canvas. And if you can, if you're adept, crop that photo out of the background of your workspace and put it against a solid color. And then you can see exactly what is going on. You see it from a more objective place and don't necessarily have the bias of what you were trying to do. Because at this point, I was definitely not where I had thought I would be when I started the painting. So I took my own advice. I took a photo. I put it against a backdrop. And you know what? I actually loved it. I was actually really happy with how it turned out. But there was a hiccup. Look at this crushed cup. It was holding up my painting while it was drying. This was a much bigger canvas than I normally use and a lot more volume of paint. And it all slid off the canvas when the canvas fell off the cup. Look at all of this wasted paint. All of those extra cups of paint slid right off and the painting turned into completely something else. Now at first I was heartbroken and frustrated but look at this composition. It's much different than what I was trying to achieve, but it's really interesting. And the iridescent white is so pearly and brings so much interest. I love it. I took my own advice again. I took a picture, put it against a solid background, and this is what I saw. What do you think? Leave a comment for me and tell me if you like my big mistake. So let me show you the final product. It's been about three days now. This is completely dry. And there's just a couple things I wanna point out. So as I mentioned, when the second layer of paint went over the edge, you can really see the difference. There is a definite raised texture to this part. Whereas with Floetrol, this would have just melded together because it had not been very long. You can see there's some texture here. 
it had not been very long between this going over the edge and this going over the edge, but it dries much faster. The other thing that I noticed, see if we can go under here, is that um, if where there were drips, they, they didn't flatten out. They didn't just drip off. So I did get some little bumps. Can you see my little bumps? They're not unattractive, but a little different than what I'm used to with Floetrol. It has a nice, um, smooth finish. You don't feel the canvas at all, but I didn't get all those, those air bubbles I was talking about. And I also think that using Floetrol as a base was not good. And these actually might be um, what I call Floetrol boogers, little tiny bits of Floetrol that get stuck in the paint. Um, so I won't use Floetrol again as a base, but the white, the Liquitex, Tex, I never say that right, white, it just, it, it's so pretty if you can see it. This won't stand up unfortunately because this isn't a level surface. I just came out here to get some natural light, but you can see how it ended out. And honestly, overall, my opinion is I will definitely continue using these colors. In fact, I'm going to do an entire Shades of Grey series. Uh, I, I'm already gearing up for it and I'm going to continue to use this medium through the whole series. I can't wait to see what the next painting looks like, especially if I have a golden pouring medium base and not Floetrol. I think this is going to be a tiny bit shinier. I still think someone is going to love this painting, even though I'm calling it my big mistake. It's a happy mistake and I learned a lot. And I do suggest these 12 shades of gray paints for anyone that wants to try them. And I hope that my, um, my opinion on adding more dark and light will help you as you use them in your pouring so that you don't get such a washed out look like I did at the beginning of this video. I would love it if you would subscribe, hit that notification bell. It really encourages me to keep going and keep painting for you all. And thank you so much for those of you who leave me comments and give me thumbs up. Have a great day. See you next time. Be on the lookout for that Shades of Grey series.